Hi everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green. Last time we had completed the game, we beat the Pokemon League and all that cool stuff. And now we have entered the post-game journey. Now, pretty much everything from this point onwards is going to be me completing stuff and catching stuff, basically. The stuff that I'm going to be showing on my channel, as I said last time, are going to be all the legendary captures, and that will pretty much be it. So today is going to be, well, pretty much just dedicated to Zapdos, and Zapdos is located in the power plant, so we're going to need to go in there. And to get there, you basically need to fly to the Pokemon Center that's near the rock pathway, and then basically just follow my pathway. Oh, rip. There is no reason why you need to do this, or it's absolutely necessary to do this in post-game, I don't think. I think you can do this at any point after you get Surf. I don't want to battle you, I just want to go straight into the power plant. Here it is. It is a bit of a maze though, which is why I have my trusty phone to guide me all the way through absolutely everything, because I'm lazy and I don't want to try and figure the whole thing out on my own. Except the internet can be slow sometimes, so when you want to get up a map, then the internet's just going to be like, no, I'm, I'm not loading today, sorry. So where are we at at the moment? Uh, I think we just walked in. I'm going to activate a repel. Otherwise, it's going to be really painful walking all the way through here. Oh, yeah, I've sold a whole bunch of stuff, and I have 64 Ultra Balls and one Master Ball in case uh, bad things happen. <laughs> I should have some repels at least. That's good. I believe that I have not yet caught a Magnemite, so if I encounter one of those, I'll be sure to catch it. What is this? Max Potion. There might be some TMs in here as well. If I happen to notice those, I'll be sure to pick them up, but if I don't notice it, then, um, well, that's that. Then I don't notice it and don't get cool things. I think it's this way. It's really cool, mysterious music that's playing in here. Ow. I just want to get to my Zapdos. Where's my Zapdos? Uh, it's probably not this way, is it? I don't think it is. I think it's a dead end. Nope. Dead end. Keep walking through. Keep on walking. Oh, 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 okay. Might have been a dead end, but there is a Pokeball in there. What does that contain? No, I got beaned. No, bad. Oh, it's an Electrode, but I haven't caught an Electrode yet, so hey, maybe I'll catch that. Uh, let's use Bite. Please don't kill. Yay! And it flinched, of course. Um, shuck an Ultra Ball at it, not a Master Ball. Ultra Ball. Once again, I have no idea what the encounter rates on these, not the encounter rates, but the uh, capture rates of these things are like, so... Ah, oh, so close, come on! No! No! You do these uh, all the time! You want to catch it, but no. In fact, the very first shiny Pokemon I ever encountered in a Pokemon game was when I was playing Pokemon Platinum, and I was walking along the route underneath Heart Home City, and I happened to encounter a Graveler, and I had no idea that shiny Pokemon could appear in games before, and when I saw this Graveler in front of me that was golden and glistening, I got really excited because I thought that, that was the most rare thing ever, and I looked it up as I was playing at the time to find out how rare these things were, and you find out that there's a 1 in 8,192 chance of you finding those things, and I was freaking out over it because that was... It was unbelievable that I managed to find one of those walking along that route. And it self-destructed on me, and I was so upset because of it. I, I swear, I almost did damage to my DS that day. I was that mad at it. My parents were like, Josh, what's wrong? Are you okay? And it, it's difficult to explain when they, when they don't really get Pokemon. But I think, I think they do now. This is like years ago, when I was probably maybe like 10 or 11 years old. I'm like 17, 18 now. But still... It was upsetting, and I've, I've never had that happen to me before, like, ever since then. The other, all the other shiny Pokemon I've encountered, I've actually managed to catch, but I haven't really managed to find many shiny Pokemon with such a low chance since then. They've upped the shiny chance in all the, all the recent games. Anyway, enough rambling. We are at our destination. We have Zapdos right in front of us. We're going to need to switch to a Pokemon that... Oh, it's annoying, because I want to send in Raichu to paralyze it, but it's an electric type, so I don't believe it can be paralyzed. I'll send in Persian to get that sweet fake out at the very beginning of the battle. Allow me to save my game real quick just before we go into this fight, because if I do happen to, uh, I don't know, fail it or whatever, then we can basically just restart from right here. So let's do that real quick. Okay, are we ready to take on the Zapdos? We have our team healed up. Yeah, I decided I was going to actually properly heal up last story, so our entire team is healed up and ready to go. Are we ready to go? Hope so. Hmm. Hang on. Um, actually, no, I don't think there's anything more that we need to do in the in the meantime. What's out this door? I'm curious. Please don't tell me I'm going to get locked out. 
Okay, it's just an exit. Okay, okay. Kyo! That's that's my accurate Zapdos impression or something like that. Oh my god, this bird it looks so cool. It's got really terrifying looking wings, but it does look really awesome. Now, of course, we're going to go in for the flinch, and then we're just going to spam payday, because that's probably the weakest move that I have got. And also, like, free money at the end of the battle as well, I believe. Oh, I did not realize I had Limbo. I barely, like, ever pay attention to my Pokemon's abilities. Competitive players that are what like, watch videos like this would just cringe so hard at a phrase like that, because they're always aware of the stats that their Pokemon have, and the types of moves that they have, and the Pokemon's abilities and everything, and I'm just seeing here... No clue what my ability is, or what it does, or why I have it, or what the other Pokemon abilities are that I have. I just send a Pokemon in and then use some moves, do some damage, and see what goes. See what happens. I don't think we'll be able to use Payday one more time there. That will probably KO it. So I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, yeah, let's just chuck an Ultra Ball. I'll chuck an Ultra Ball, see what goes. See what happens. I have no idea what it's going to do. It's probably going to be a fail immediately because that's generally what happens when it comes to legendaries. Okay, could have been worse. Could have definitely been worse. See, and what generally happens when it comes to playing and trying to capture legendaries like this is that for the first, like, minute or so, I will, be, I will remain focused on the game. And then after that point onwards, I don't want to talk about the game. Because I'm basically just saying, oh, here we go. Counting down the shakes of the ball, and then it just doesn't work. And then I continuously say, and it didn't work, and it didn't work, and it didn't work. And it gets really, really annoying. You know, which makes me think that when people play Pokemon, you've got the people that play Pokemon, and they focus a lot on the game while they're playing it in a very immersive sort of way. So it can be a very immersive experience. And then you've got the other people that play Pokemon while they're doing other things. So... Like, you're sitting down at like, the kitchen bench or something at your home eating food or sitting down like watching TV and occasionally just doing something on a DS. Or the most common one, or the, one of the most common ones that I've heard of is, is like playing on the bus. Playing like on the bus into town or into work or into, I don't know, school or whatever. Into the bus or car trips. Definitely car trips. I mean, I didn't often drive too much when it came to like school because in primary school I lived very close, like I'm like less than five minutes away, so I could walk very very quickly. And when I got into high school, I was able to walk to school, but I didn't often just because my sisters were at schools nearby, so I could get dropped off with my sisters, and we didn't really we didn't really bother doing anything in the car. It was like. 10-15 minutes for all of us to get dropped off but if you live really really far away from things it gets very boring sitting in a car for half an hour every single day there and then back so that's like an hour car trip every single day just to like get into school and back you need entertainment for that you need entertainment or productivity so you can sit in the car and do all your schoolwork and get everything done and get all your like assessments and things done or you can play Pokemon there are lots of Pokemon games so I mean, you could, you could do a whole marathon thing where every single time you get in the car to go to school or from school or get on the bus to go, like, to university or from university or to work and back or however old you may be or whatever you may do, try to play from the very first Pokemon game. That's Pokemon... Uh, which which one actually was it? I believe it was Pokemon Red. That was the very first one. So start, start with Pokemon Red and just, like, make your way through, starting from Generation 1 and just make your way up through the many generations if you play on an emulator or you play on like an actual 3DS with a virtual system in built into it. It's whatever. It's you, you pick. You, it's your preference. Whatever you want to do. There was a friend that was telling me that when he was with his friends for a long period of time, they decided they were going to play through every single existing Assassin's Creed game. And I'm not talking like they play through a bit of the game and then go, okay, we're going to do something else. It was like legit marathon playing every single Assassin's Creed game and apparently they would try to get through them in a way that they have one person playing and like maybe another one watching and then they then some other people would sleep and it would almost be like they were taking it in turns or doing like shifts just to get through every single one of the Assassin's Creed games now I don't know how big they are or how many there are apparently there are like a lot of Assassin's Creed games so that would be pretty ridiculous. I mean, I know that they are big open world-ish kind of games, I guess. Oh, it's probably not the best of ideas to have sent Blastoise in there. Whoops. 
But have you, have you ever done anything like that? Have you done like a video gaming marathon with your friends or a video gaming marathon on your own? I don't really do the marathon sort of things because I'm much more catered to doing things in like bursts, I guess. So like for a short amount of time, I will be able to put a lot of energy into something. So I can play games for like an hour, two hours or something, and then I will want to take a break for a bit and then do something else and then come back to it. My friends know that if I end up recording for like many, many, many hours on end, then I will lose interest slightly just because I need, my, my mind needs to have a break from it every once in a while. But it really depends on the kind of game it is because there are some games that I would play for like hours and hours and you can get into a bit more of an addicting or addictive sort of mindset, I guess. I don't often find that for games though. I do sometimes, it really depends on the game. It also depends on like what other people are playing at the time as well because when you are playing as like the same game as your friends then you can all start talking about that and it becomes a thing that you're thinking about a lot and you're talking about a lot so you're wanting to put more and more time into it so for example if you've got an entire group of people that are all playing the same pokemon game then it will be much more addictive to continue playing that game than if you were just playing it on your own because you get more enjoyment out of being able to share your experience and enjoyment with your friends. This is really unsuccessful. I'm using Ultra Balls on this thing at the moment and it has not moved any more than once, I think. And thus I have not been paying attention. I probably haven't been paying attention all that well. But I do look at it and it's like, what? Shakes once and it just pops out. Why does it do this? If I use every single one of my Ultra Balls, I'm restarting and I'm not going to be happy about it, but at least at least I will be able to restart and use the exact same Ultra Balls I had before. They won't all go to waste. The most annoying thing is when you go through every single one apart from like three and then you set out like the second last one that you have or the third last one that you have and then it captures. Because then you've lost all your Ultra Balls and you need to go and make more money to buy more or you need to go and buy more and it's frustrating. Uh, another thing that I am able to talk about slightly is that I'm no longer using my Logitech controller, I'm using an Xbox controller. I wanted to try to see if I could use it like wirelessly, but because it's not an Xbox One S controller, it can't use Bluetooth, so I had to get like a specific adapter for that, which I, I may or may not get sometime in the, in the near future, depending on how bothered I feel. But it's quite nice though, I mean, I... Use I, I don't often play on the Xbox, honestly, I use it more for like watching YouTube videos and like anime and stuff. Just because I can do it on the big screen, which is cool. And again, if I end up getting... If I, if I play any Xbox games, then I'll have a controller to use them on that I actually own. Because I'm not the one in my household that owns the Xbox. Uh, my sisters own it. I own the Switch, and my dad owns a PlayStation 4. That's how I've been playing Detroit Become Human. Except they're away for a little while, so I had a chance to... I had a chance to record. They knew I was recording on it. They were, they were pretty happy with that. But the point being that I have an Xbox controller, but I don't actually have an Xbox to use it on. I'm basically just using it like a PC controller currently. And I think that Steam interprets it just like a standard Steam controller, because when you press the Xbox logo on it, it will bring you to the, to the Steam menu. Which it often does when I use my Logitech controller, and probably if you're using the Steam controller too. That's like you press the, you press the middle button on the controller, the big logo -y menu button, and then it will take you to your games library, I believe. I am keen for the moment where this Zapdos actually decides to work with me. I can't really do much to it. Like, I can't really reduce its health. I can't paralyze. What? I can paralyze it! Okay. Well, I guess that works. This is the point where I throw one Ultra Ball and then it just works because it's paralyzed. Nope. Not, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. That is unbelievable. I don't want to have to resort to resetting or using a master ball, please. One, two, three. Every time, every time, it does this all the time when I play Pokemon games and I want to catch a legendary. It moves three times and it escapes, and then it moves three times and then it escapes. Or it does that thing where it moves three times, escapes, and then like the next ten Ultra Balls you throw, it won't move at all. See, some games are partially RNG, that are like, kind of skill-based, but they do like to incorporate some random elements to make them a bit more interesting and unpredictable. 
With Pokemon, it is completely unpredictable when it comes to wild Pokemon, especially legendaries. It is 100% random, random number generator based. You throw a Pokeball and it either catches or it doesn't. And in this case, most of the time it doesn't. But it's paralyzed and it's on low health. And to think that I will have a third bird Pokemon to catch after this. And then I think that would be it for the legendaries. I don't think it might be. I mean, I don't really know. I do know that you're able to catch Mewtwo in this game, but I'm not entirely sure how I go about doing that or where I go about doing it. There's probably going to be like a cave at some point that I'm going to need to find. I'm going to walk in and I'll find a level 70 Mewtwo. I think that's how it goes. Can't remember, honestly. No, whatever it happens to be, we're going to find a Mewtwo as well. Mewtwo's cool. You ever just sit there throwing Pokeballs over and over again mindlessly and just start to fall asleep? That's, that's, that's how I'm feeling at the moment. 20 ultra balls to go. I had 63 at the start of the battle. Not working. I'm glad that you're paralyzed and can't move because you are a bird and birds don't go well with monkeys in Pokemon. Do you use Drill Peck and that will be my life gone? Yep. So far, so good. Yes. No. As if it was going to make a difference. I'm not attacking you. I'm not going anywhere near you. Yay! I got a feeling it was going to catch on that. When it moved three times, I was like, I got a feeling that it's going to work. And it did work, but it's kind of annoying. Zapdos, a legendary bird Pokemon that is said to appear from clouds while dropping enormous lightning bolts. You dropped like no lightning bolts in that battle at all. You used Drill Peck, that was pretty powerful. You used Thunder Wave, and that paralyzed like one of my Pokemon. That was pretty much it. Uh, the other thing I do want to do at some point in this place is catch... A Magnemite and a Magneton, but that's probably going to be for another day. But I'm probably not going to put that up on my channel because it's just going to be like one or two Pokemon. So, this is going to be a short video because there's no reason why we can't do short videos. We could do, we've done some pretty damn long videos in the past when it comes to Pokemon. I think that the final episode or the final main story episode was like 40 minutes long because it was just big. So, uh, next time we're going to be heading fairly far away. I don't know exactly where... I don't know where the island is. Is that how you leave? There's actually a cancel option on the map. You can't, you can't just press B? You can press B. I don't, I don't get that. That's that's really confusing. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave this map open. And next time on Pokemon Leaf Green, we're going to be flying somewhere. I don't know what that somewhere is specifically. Because we need to get out onto the cool islands of mysteriousness. That's definitely not what they're called. And I'm calling them that because I can. And we're going to be catching a big, fiery bird. So, next time we're taking on Moltres. Hope they're going to catch that. It might be a bit more successful. I'm going to need to get more Ultra Balls in the meantime. So, thank you all so much for joining me on this episode of Pokemon Leaf Green. I hope you enjoyed. Have an awesome day, guys. Goodbye. Hey, everybody. I'm Mario the Smashery. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed and want to support this channel, give this video a like. And be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Check out more of my videos. And I hope to see you all again soon.